Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're enjoying the content why not like and subscribe and consider following us on Patreon and today we're doing another organ chat here the Pavilion Bournemouth with its original 1929 Compton organ With me is Christian Knighton, who knows more about this instrument and this building than, well, basically anybody. Christian, tell us a bit about this building. When well, did it all start? It all started in 1924 when Bournemouth Council uh, put forward a plan uh, to build a new entertainment complex in the town centre. And they put an advert in the Daily Telegraph um, to invite up and coming architects to put forward plans in the form of a competition. Uh, and by the end of 1924, they had a successful architects, Wyville Home and Shirley Knight, uh, who, who had put forward a plan for a new concert hall for the town with 1,560 seats uh, and also a big ballroom and lots and lots of restaurants uh, taking about around about a thousand covers in the same building and kitchens to provide the whole of the seafront with all the food that was required for the council outlets along the seafront, the seven miles of beach that was then going. Um, and uh, it opened on March the 19th, 1929, um, uh, with the Duke of Gloucester and uh, Philip Dore at this wonderful Compton organ. And uh, the organ was put in uh, to play with the municipal orchestra. And uh, the municipal orchestra in the 1946 became the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra as we sort of know it now. Um, in 1934, the um, building closed uh, for nearly six months while they made alterations to it because they realized that the concert hall was not what they needed, although they did need a concert hall, they needed a theater. Uh, and uh, luckily, um, they put in all the facilities that we ha you have and use today uh, and uh, the organ remained, uh, the orchestra remained until the 40s uh, and in sort of 1946, 1947 uh, the orchestra had a new home in the Winter Gardens um, uh, so they went, moved out of this building and theatre took over so theatre and shows have been here although they were, did have a small stage in 1929 and there were small uh, entertainments took place here uh, the big show started coming in 1934 and onwards, uh, the West End musicals, touring, operas and ballets, uh, National Ballet came here, so uh, right through and we've sort of never closed. The only close, closure period that we've had here at the Pavilion was during the Covid years uh, and that was the only time the building had actually shut apart from when the alterations were taking place. So the building was listed in 1992, Grade 2, uh, with English Heritage. Uh, and um, we've sort of been able to do some restoration where funds have permitted uh, a little bit of redecoration, new carpets, uh, just attention to a few of the maintenance issues here. Uh, but we're still waiting for that big uh, money sum, as it were, to just sort of refit the whole building and give it, give it what it should, should have. It's certainly a jewel in the crown for Bournemouth. Uh, and I've been involved here since uh, on and off since 1975, uh, you know, so yeah, it's really good. Well, it's, just, it's a fantastic auditorium and the ballroom as well, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was fantastic, the, you know, the, the ornate work that's gone into it. But it, it's a mixture of styles, isn't it? Because there's a mixture of like Roman, there's a bit of Greek yeah. there as well. Yeah. And uh, I think one of my favourite features, if you don't mind me saying, yeah. is, the, is the chandeliers. Yeah. Tell us about those, if you don't right. mind. Well, the chandeliers here in the auditorium were originally a glass chandelier made by the General Electric Company, which matched the remaining chandeliers that are in the corridors surrounding the uh, auditorium. Uh, large versions of it, but there was a big bomb dropped during World War II on Bournemouth uh, and it shook all the buildings around where the bomb actually went off, which was on Beals, the department store, destroyed the whole department store. It lifted the roof off of St Peter's Church and the, the roof reset itself out of slightly askew. This was only discovered when they did some maintenance work to see that it was actually not quite sitting properly on the, uh, on the stone uh, pillars, but anyway. Uh, at the same time, a lot of glass was blown out and here in the auditorium there were some cracks in the ceiling uh, and also glass fell from all the chandeliers. Uh, so at that time the chandeliers were instantly removed, they were obviously badly damaged anyway, 
and these new chandeliers were installed around about 1942, I think, something like that. And these chandeliers are entirely made of metal, apart from the glass lamps that are inside and now replaced with LED. But so you wouldn't you wouldn't really believe it unless you, unless somebody told you because they you know you you can't really tell. Yeah. Um, and again, tell us about the organ. So 1929 yeah. installed in two chambers either side of the stage. Um, right. well, how how big is it? I mean, it's you know, it's a magnificent well, instrument. It, it's it's uh, I think 22 ranks is its sort of title of number of voices on the on the organ. Um, and uh, there were in in 1932. Um, Philip Dorr left, he was the original organist, and Percy Whitlock uh, took over. Percy Whitlock was organist at St Stephen's Church in Bournemouth, uh, and uh, he added two ranks. So originally I guess it was a 20 rank instrument, and then it became 22 ranks. He put on a new uh, clarinet on the solo division uh, and a concert flute. So those were the two added ranks. And they're visibly different inside the chambers because they've got the Baker-like magnets rather than the metal magnets. So it's quite obvious they were a later addition. There are two A numbers connected to the serial numbers of this organ. Uh, originally A17, which is the March 1929 A number, and then I think it's A134 that came up uh, for the for the later editions uh, that Percy Whitlock. Now Percy Whitlock apart from being a brilliant composer and musician, was also a dab hand with a soldering iron. And he was very keen to change lots of mutations on the organ to suit his likes, as it were. And some of the remaining bits of cable and old cotton cables where he's pulled various things out are still out and dangling at the back of the action boards. <laughs> um, so 1,562 pipes, they're all metal. Uh, no wooden pipes in this organ. Yeah. Well, I say it's very much an orchestral organ, isn't it? It's, you know, it's best of both worlds, and it, it and it fills this room, uh, you know, wonderfully. Anyway, thank you, Christian. Thanks okay. for thank you for talking to us, That's and right. uh, we'll, we shall hear a bit of the organ uh, a little later on. <laughs>
thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video today. And if you have, please like and subscribe. And why not follow us on Patreon, where you'll get exclusive access to behind-the-scenes footage. And until next time, bye-bye for now.